So, Pam, what do you think the bad blood started between recreational and commercial fishermen or fishing groups? When did that happen? Well, there really wasn't any bad blood that I knew anything about, or nobody around here knew anything about until they, uh, until the moratorium process happened. Um, there was uh, an attorney, um, Bob Lucas, who sort of spearheaded that. You knew Bob. And um, anyway, so they decided, they being these, you know, I guess recreational fishing groups, whatever, um, that something needed to be done. At the same time, there were these rumblings in Florida about a net ban, and that was a movement that was started in Texas by the Coastal Conservation Association over Red Drum, um, who's fishing the practice, that practice of capturing Red Drum that they were opposed to did not occur on the East Coast anyway. Um, that never occurred here. We never had a problem with it. Didn't really realize or understand that other people were projecting this problem on us and expanding, you know, this idea that something needed to be done. I didn't think any of the commercial people were really aware of it that much at all. I know I, know I wasn't, and I mean, it was always whatever conflict there were. It was between commercial fishermen. It was never involving a, a recreational fisherman. I mean, those were the people we saw coming to the fish house for bait or wanting a clue or two on where to catch, you know, whatever fish they were looking for at the time. So I never really heard anything about this until the moratorium process be began. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I was alone in that. Yeah. So, of course, the moratorium was what really kicked off the whole Fisheries Reform Act process. Can you tell us how you were involved, if at all, in that process? Where were you? What, what was your involvement? What was going on at the time? Well, before the moratorium process, there was a, another process that had to do with oysters called the Blue Ribbon Oyster, um, Blue Ribbon Oyster, it wasn't a committee, there was a name for it, whatever. The, Council the, or committee? Yeah, something, something to that effect. Yeah. Anyway, what they were all about was you know, trying to look at oysters and the decline, supposed decline of oysters. Oysters at the time were facing uh, this dermo and MSX outbreaks in the 1980s that were really um, having a big impact on oyster populations. So they formed this blue ribbon oyster thing. Well, um, some of the people pushing this blue ribbon oyster thing um, were what well, we and some of us and we I say just individuals viewed as folks trying to take over Core Sound and take it for their benefit and possess it as is as if it were their own. And also at this about same time there was a clam lease gained through a loophole um, that happened by Felon Atlantic, who still has that lease on the eastern side of Core Banks, or of course Sound next to Core Banks. And that was a total firestorm about that. That was before the moratorium steering committee was commenced, was this blue ribbon thing. So people were talking about locally here. I don't know how far out it went because Carteret County is like Shellfish Central, um, or was at the time. Now I think that's more down south now to an extent than it is here.